Yeah, so uh, like was mentioned, so I'm John Rood, uh, I work at NREL. Uh, specifically, I work in the high performance algorithms and complex fluids um, group at NREL. So I have a picture of turbines here, but um, I'm gonna be talking about a combustion application that I work on under the Exascale Computing Project uh, under the DOE. Um, so yeah, NREL does more than just like renewable energy. We also do uh, vehicle technologies and things like that. So, so yeah, um, I work on two ECP applications actually. I work on ExaWind, uh, if anybody's heard of it, um, and also those combustion applications. So, um, so I mostly focus on performance and performance engineering and things like that. Um, so my talk is from Pele C to Pele ACC to Pele C++. So this project started in 2016 um, when uh, Intel Xeon fees were still what we were focused on. So um, we kind of had this trajectory that changed over the past couple of years. So this is kind of the story of how we got to where we are today um, running on GPUs. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm talking about a combustion, combustion application too. And I know since we're at NCAR, there's a lot of like weather and climate. Um, and I've also worked on weather and climate in the past uh, in my career. So uh, if anybody has questions, I can kind of speak to um, what I'm doing in more of like a weather and climate code sense too. So, so uh, let's get started if I can. Um, so the Pele project is under ECP. Um, it's actually split up into two codes. So I'm gonna be focused on uh, Pele C, which is uh, what I uh, develop, uh, focused in developing on. Uh, so these codes solve the reacting Navier-Stokes on structured grids using adaptive mesh refinement and also uh, embedded boundaries for complex geometries. So we're based on the AMRX library, which is out of Lawrence Berkeley lab. Uh, they're kind of like a code design center. So we kind of work with uh, most of the codes that use AMRX and ECP at least are all um, co-designing co AMRX together and helping each other benefit from it. So Pale AC is a compress compressible combustion simulation application. So we do explicit time stepping. We also have this Pele LM application, which is uh, the low mock version of Pele. Um, and it's uh, implicit time stepping, so it requires linear solvers. Uh, we also have this uh, shared library, Pele Physics, where we actually share code for doing chemistry evaluations and reactions. So I have these uh, this video going. Hopefully you can see it um, in the upper right corner. I have uh, a simulation that Pele C did uh, do using complex geometries. Uh, this is a supersonic cavity flame. Um, so there's supersonic air flowing over this uh, jet, basically, um, and it's causing a bunch of shockwaves and things. So one of my colleagues did a paper on that, and they actually won some award for doing a whole visualization video um, with narration and everything. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, in the bottom right corner, we're actually doing uh, what our grand challenge problem is. It's a lower uh, resolution version. Um, so this is a, we call it the piston bowl. So we're actually injecting seven uh, fuel jets into the top of a piston cylinder there. Um, so you can kind of see the, the jets. Uh, it's easier to see on the purple side there. Um, so basically they're just impinging on the wall uh, um, and igniting. Okay, so a little overview for Pele C and like what, um, what it takes to maneuver the code in Pele C. Uh, it started out, we were like, you know, 2016, we were like 50,000 lines of code. Um, and if you've ever used uh, adaptive mesh re refinement applications, um, there's kind of this ideology that started to, to do the, the kernels where you're actually calculating, um, you know, like uh, your numerical schemes on, on little patches of boxes in the domain. Um, you typically do that in Fortran and the overall orchestration of the code kind of happens in C++. So we followed that model early on. Um, so we had about 12,000 lines of C++ and about 40,000 lines of Fortran, which was just uh, the computational kernels. So Pele C was originally split up into uh, dimensional code too. So we had basically just folders with duplicate code for the 2D version and the 1D version, 3D version. Um, so another little aspect of the Pele codes is we, we do source code generation with this, uh, we have this Python code. Um, code emitter that we call Fuego, uh, which basically takes like a, 
uh, we call it, it's a chemkin format um, where you have a certain chemistry that has a bunch of different species for the fuel that you're going to use. And we basically just generate um, C code to that we can call these routines that are basically just unrolled loops um, for all this chemistry uh, routines. So what that happened, uh, what, what that does in, in Pele C originally was, so we had C++ at the top that would call Fortran um, kernels that would then call C routines that were generated from the source code. So there was this Fortran sandwich in there um, that I feel like was really starting to cause us many issues uh, to have just Fortran bunched in the middle there that uh, I'll try to talk about a little bit more in the past, but or in the later slides. So the original Pele C programming model um, was MPI plus OpenMP uh, in AMRX here. So, so MPI ranks really operated in bulk synchronous uh, data parallel fashion uh, with halo, halo exchanges, um, kind of typical PDE stuff, uh, I assume a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, so with OpenMP, our threads would operate on independent tiles. So over in the right here, I have um, kind of the data structure layout. So there, there's these idea in AMRX called FABs, which are Fortran array boxes, uh, which tells you how much Fortran was really a, a critical piece at the beginning of all this. Um, so you have these, uh, you see I have a loop at the bottom here, it's called the MF iter loop. So a multi-fab iterator basically just is a giant iteration over all these uh, larger boxes that are outlined in black on that figure. Um, so when you do a Pragma OpenMP parallel loop, uh, or pragma over the that loop, um, we're basically doing one thread per tile. So we kind of we even um, break down the hierarchy into tiles inside that fab. Um, so if you look at the blue boxes on each side, so that the thread one is basically doing those, um, and then the orange ones, the, the, the parallelism happens over the the full MF iter loop, not just in the the box. Um, so you can kind of see a little example of how that works. You just get a tile box and each thread works in the tile box. So that's the that's the original focus we had for the programming model for uh, Knight's Landing Intel ZMP. Um, so we would also focus on um, vectorization. So inside the kernels, um, we basically had lowered loops um, where the X direction was trying to not do any if conditions and things and just vectorize on the, on the X um, dimension. So what happened after uh, around, I forget, 2017 or so, Xeon Phi was discontinued. Uh, so GPUs become the birth uh, focus of the birth for Exascale and we're working under the Exascale computing project. So we had to find the quickest way to use utilizing the GPUs. So that was really to offload the kernels to device. We already had the kernels um, written. Um, so I started looking into how to do this, and I really felt like OpenACC was the most mature Fortran, uh, Fortran GPU programming model at the time. And I had been using OpenACC in the past in other projects uh, in Fortran weather models that I had worked on. Um, so unfortunately, if that ties you kind of mostly to the PGI compiler, in my opinion, or you know maybe the Cray compiler if you're on Cray. Uh, OpenACC was introduced in 2011, so it's been used in production, I know, uh, um, the Cosmo model and Mateo Swiss, the Swiss Weather Service, was using it in production um, since like 2014. Uh, and we didn't pick OpenMP4 since it was introduced. It was introduced in 2013, so it was like available. But when I look at um, this, uh, the GPU technology conference from NVIDIA, the, from this March 2018, uh, OpenMP on GPUs, the first experiences and best practices. So I didn't feel like OpenMP4 was the right way to go um, for doing our prototyping. And also OpenACC pragmas have a straightforward mapping to OpenMP pragmas, uh, made it kind of easy to write the code. Um, and really the main thing was we didn't have to remove the current OpenMP pragmas that already existed in PaleC for the CPU codes. Um, so we're really just trying to minimize the amount of modification we had to do. Um, so as we move along here, I have this call graph that I created in VTune that kind of colors everything based on the amount of uh, time spent in the routine. So uh, to see like how much work this was going to take uh, our staff, um, we can see that there's this one main routine called do mole advance, which is taking like 90% of the time. 
um, gets split into this Gitmul source term and React state. So the, together, those are 64% plus 26%. So there's a lot of a, the runtime was in a small amount of functions, which was kind of nice. So that's all I'm really trying to get across there. So for the OpenACC effort, um, there was really just around five kernel routines under that Gitmul source term we had to parallelize. Um, it was really a lot more uh, routines under that Fuego like generated code that we just had to label at OpenACC as sequential device routines. Um, so unfortunately, we had to write a Fortran version of the code generator for those routines. Um, that took me about a week to do, to do that just myself. Um, and also this uh, React state call, which takes a lot of time, is really an implicit uh, ODE solver uh, called Debo uh, with a ton of if, if conditions in it. So we, we decided to implement a simpler explicit solver for these ODE solves that happen in per cell in our code uh, for the, the GPU because the Debo wasn't going to work very well. The GPU is just clear. So as we were doing this open ACC effort, there was a concurrent C++ effort from a couple other staff um, that, that were, we were trying to find the right path to go down. So um, they had already written this explicit solver in C++ and CUDA at the same time that we were working. So we just hooked into that. So that's a little piece of this um, that we didn't completely write in open ACC. Uh, but it's, it's good to know that this explicit solver that we wrote is actually when you run it on the CPU, it's six times slower than using Debo. So at that point, the React state kind of like totally dominates the runtime, like around 90% of the runtime, if you use the explicit ODE solve. So the, the, Pele C, the, the open ACC programming model kind of looks like this. So we have this MF iter loop that we used to do tiling on um, for the CPU. You basically, for the GPU, you want to have the boxes as big as you can. So we don't do tiling on the GPU. So there's this little tiling, if not GPU, um, boolean operator there so over this mf iter loop uh if you see i call this just plus one acc it's a kernel that adds one to a component of uh, the grid and then it, what our code looked like was a call a huge nest of uh, sequential device routine functions that did uh, whatever it did in that cell so the acc uh there's this pragma acc parallel loop gang vector collapse is basically just saying uh collapse this entire uh, three-dimensional loop into one big grid and then put that on the device and then have a one thread per um, cell basically. Uh, so that's how that worked. Um, and I, I want to mention that when we started this effort, we, we were doing the memory management ourselves by doing the, the copies in OpenACC pragmas ourselves um, explicitly. But as we moved along uh, and AMRX's GPU um, infrastructure started developing, we really got to be able to use uh, this default present statement that uh, we had AMRX itself would um, copy all of the component variables on the grid to the device for us before we needed them. Um, so I'll, I'll mention that a little bit later, but that was pretty crucial for performance. Um, so really we just needed to make sure that every routine under the sequential or uh, that was called was listed as sequential device routines. Another thing that we did was run with the multi-process server, which is called MPS. Uh, so on some, I'm really, uh, Summit was our machine that we're focusing on. So on Summit, I would run seven ranks per GPU to obtain like asynchronous kernel behavior so that our boxes were arbitrary size. So ultimately, if you're on the GPU, you kind of want to have the largest a fab you can fit onto a GPU at a time and let the GPU do as much parallelism as it can. So we don't really have that with a bunch of small boxes. Um, so we're trying to uh, add asynchronous behavior. So one way to do that is to use the multi-process server. Um, so you can basically share ranks uh, into a single, so multiple ranks can um, use a single GPU together. Um, so I'm going to show some results here. So I'm just going to show the little test case that I, I run. There, there's no embedded boundaries in here. So this is just a, a no complex geometry. We're just doing a premixed flame case. So it's just a thin wavy flame in the middle of the domain. And if you see on the right side, I have two, uh, two levels of AMR uh, that occurs there. So our initial results um, 
were kind of promising in the, in the sense that we were just at least getting what we thought was speed up. So our initial open ACC port started out uh, over three times faster than Cori KNL um, when we were running on Summit. So that was at least, you know, it wasn't slower. Uh, so we were um, happy about that. Uh, and as soon as we plugged in that uh, CUDA React state call, um, it got to be 8x faster. Um, and I think this was just uh, even with, um, without the explicit memory management at that point. So this effort really took around two of us, like I would say five weeks of development time, but we did find one major bug to, uh, and reported to PGI in their open ACC implementation. Um, so that was a pretty frustrating aspect of this that we, we had to wait for that for a while. Um, so alongside this, I uh, mentioned that, that there was a C++ effort going on, which is what the crux of this talk is about. Um, so this is really the MPI plus CUDA model for GPUs. Uh, and like, like the OpenACC um, effort, it's, it's really one thread per cell is kind of the idea here. So focus on maximum parallelism in a kernel. So we're basically doing like what I would call hoisted perfectly nested loops. Um, so you just kind of consider every uh, cell independent um, in, the, in the domain. Um, so here we're doing one rank per GPU uh, with CUDA streams for asynchronous behavior at this point, actually. So if you look at the, the AMRX um, uh, diagram on the right side, uh, you basically do a fab and, the, uh, and you, you can launch multiple streams uh, and do one fab uh, per, or you just do, yeah, I, I guess, uh, it, Rather than using MPS, you can use streams to get the same type of asynchronous behavior. Um, and I don't really want to get too much into that, I guess. Um, so you can actually look at the uh, MF iter loop down at the bottom there. So the, if, any, if anybody's programmed in Cocos or Raja or even Grid Tools, um, you can see that the, this is the C++ Lambda approach. Um, so we're basically, the, they have this thing called a parallel four. Um, so you do the MF iter loop, call the parallel four on the box, uh, the Fortran array box that you have given the IJK um, that you're at. And then whatever you're doing in that kernel, uh, you just take the IJK uh, index and then do whatever you want. Here, we're just adding one. Um, so that's just kind of a slight overview of the, the AMRX GPU C++ strategy. Um, so as soon as two separate teams went down this path and we kind of converged together to see the results, um, we found out that uh, the OpenACC prototype basically matched the exact performance of the C++ prototype. So here, this plot is really showing you uh, just ex exclusively running on Summit. Uh, running on Summit with Devo, the implicit solves, by the way, for uh, ODE solves per cell um, on the CPU. Uh, so that's, that's the black bar here. And then the CUDA and ACC runs are um, almost right on top of each other on this line at the bottom. So, what that really tells me is that at this point, we're kind of deciding what route to take. Do we continue keeping uh, Fortran around and running the open ACC model or do we move to the C++ uh, model? So it was basically a matter of kind of being sick of what the Fortran code looked like um, that we really at this point decided to commit to the C++ effort ultimately. Um, and here we're actually, uh, both cases are getting, I think, between 16 to 18 X speed up on the GPU uh, from the Summit CPUs, the Power Nines. Um, so at that point, we just started, uh, we decided to commit to um, the C++ effort really. So we have some further C++ results and we've gone you know, much further beyond this uh, at this moment too. So uh, this is interesting to me in that, um, this plot here is all explicit uh, ODE solves. So, so what we're really comparing here is really just the programming model. And there's an extra machine in here that I'll talk about on these plots. So when we really start off with the original code uh, in this strong, so we did a strong scaling plot here uh, for that PMF case. Um, 
And this black line at the top is really how the code began. If you were on Summit using GCC, I never used the Excel compiler on, on Summit, but maybe that would give some kind of speed up. So that this is the original code, but with the explicit solver. So it's slower than you would run it on the uh, CPU. Um, but yeah, ultimately we're really comparing the programming model here. So what was really surprising to me is we moved to entirely C++ kernels and I expected the vectorization to be much better in Fortran because all our loops were really lowered on the X direction, but here they're hoisted up. So everything in the kernel is a bunch of if conditions on what, what you're doing in, uh, in that fab. Um, and they're always perfectly nested loops. You, you don't get around that. So there's always gonna be a lot of if conditions in each cell. Um, but we still get two x the two times the speed up uh, just from the Fortran to the CPU version. That's the exact same code path. So I was really interested to to see that. I, I don't know what really caused that. If it was uh, more inter procedural optimization or things like that, I'm uh, I'm not sure. But I thought vectorization would take a hit. Um, so the real comparison to me is between the green line and the blue line on that plot on the left. Uh, so we have this machine at uh, NREL called Eagle, which is a really an Intel Skylake machine that has 36 cores per um, node. So that's the fastest way I know is using the Intel compiler on that machine is the fastest way I know how to run Pele C on the CPUs, on a, on a CPU. So when you look at that um, comparison, we're really uh, between the blue line, which is running on the GPUs, uh, uh, you know, on Summit, which is six, uh, NVIDIA V100s per node, um, there were 18x faster uh, on a per node basis, which is what we're comparing. Maybe that's not super fair, but I think it's pretty easy to um, wrap my head around just a node per node uh, comparison there. Um, so if you really want to backtrack on this, you can see the numbers I have over there. So we're actually 56 times faster uh, on the CPUs on Summit the, than, the, than the Power 9s. And if we really want to pat ourselves on the back, we're 124x faster than kind of the original code, except for we were using explicit ODE solves. So we know that if we ran with um, the implicit solves, they would be faster on the, the CPU. But I've done that comparison and it's not, um, it's about where the, the green line is. So we're always at, at around 16 to 18x faster on Summit. Um, and we ran, I mean, I, I, I run Pale AC on Summit, uh, on 100% of Summit on, uh, in a, a lot of uh, recent runs that I've done. And you can see the weak scaling we have on the right side. So I go from one node to uh, 4,096 nodes, which is 90% of Summit. And we lose about 30% parallel um, efficiency um, scaling, weak scaling up from one node to to 4,096 nodes. So at 4,096 nodes, I'm running about a 20 billion uh, cell problem there. Um, so the conclusions that I really had going through this um, story of porting Pele C to OpenACC and then the, the C++ um, kind of Cocos Raja style, but it's in AMRX. Um, OpenACC, it, it allowed us to prototype the, on the GPU pretty quickly. And I really, I've seen this a lot in other talks is that performance for OpenACC and OpenMP on the GPU, you can get similar performance to CUDA, um, but really the, the code became displeasing in, in my opinion. The, there was, I mean, no matter what, you still have pragmas all over the place and then just, just still having the Fortran coupling in our application was, um, was too much baggage to, to carry around. And I've had problems, mixed languages cause problems for readability for me, debugging, profiling, uh, compiler optimizations. Um, I work on a lot of new uh, early exascale machines and the compilers are usually, you know, not focused on Fortran. So you're kind of waiting. They usually focus on C++ first. Um, so really non-ubiquitous programming models that lack support, robustness, flexibility. I think that Fortran was really holding us back in this case. Um, and now I can say Pele C is around 20,000 lines of just C++ um, with increased performance, uh, you know, down from 50,000 lines. And we can still do multi-dimensional, um, we can do 2D simulations um, because our calls to, we used to do explicit calls to Fortran that had the, 
the dimension kind of embedded in it and we got rid of that and we got rid of a bunch of code. So I don't think the Fortran really benefited us in any way. Maybe in the past it did when it could optimize better, but I think, you, I mean, you can get performance out of C++. So uh, it surprised me that it was two, two times faster on the CPU. I think it's easier to debug and profile. I think the kernels are easier to read, um, much less duplicate code. We can use every compile, you know, all the C++ compilers, all the LLVM and um, Cray compilers. And, there's so many C++ compilers to choose from. I think we have good performance portability. And this really, all in all, took us like one graduate student about six months, started off the C++ effort. Um, and then I think uh, I really see. Sorry. Um, in about two staffed, I think about 12 weeks to we completely moved to C++. And now that we're in the AMRX framework, um, we're actually already running on early Frontier and Aurora hardware with Pale AC. So um, since we bought into this framework, we're, we're kind of just waiting for the machines to show up to see what uh, Pale AC is going to, to, to perform like on those machines. So um, I think that's uh, getting close to the end of time. So uh, that's all that I have for my talk. Thank you.